Hello, and welcome back to Trista's Reading Room. Today we are looking at The Dragon Child. Ooh. Try and get without glare. Hmm. By Dana Woods. This was published on October 12th, 2022. An alchemist who yearns for a quiet life. A dragonborn destined for greater things. The queen of beasts who will protect them all. Anarin returns home to begin his life immediately swept away on an unexpected adventure to protect a dragon child from certain death. With the help of his teacher, Brychen, the great golden eye of the mountain, Anarin and his friends journey through the three realms, encountering sky pirates, dragons, and their own fears in order to keep the dragon child safe. With the fate of a child in his hands, can Anarin truly protect him at all costs? Or will the balance of the world fall to the reign of dragon kind? This is the first book in Dragons and Dirigibles, and it's for all ages. There is not much for content warning, except there is loss of parents. You can find the physical and digital versions of this on Barnes & Noble and Apple Books, and just the digital on Smashword, Kobo, and others. Here's a bit about the author. Dana Woods lives with her three children in the southernmost reaches of the frozen tundra of Wisconsin. Her favorite pastimes are getting lost in her imagination, wearing elf ears to the grocery store, dressing in steampunk for a night out, procrastinating writing, creating art, and living to the fullest. Here's the inspiration. Treasure Planet started my love for steampunk. I've always wanted to write a steampunk novel, and suddenly in August of 2020, while watching the first few episodes of Merlin, everything clicked. I love all things fantasy and imagine myself an elven fey queen known as the Lady of the Wood. I went on to title my friends with illustrious names based on their locations or talents, and the Master of Potions inspired an alchemist who simply wants to live out his dreams in a boring, ordinary life. Thus birthed Anarin. You can find Dana on Facebook or on her blog. Chapter 1 Metal hooks on a brand new sign clanked against the eyelets on the post above the door. The wooden sign held an image of a slender dragon looped into an infinity circle, with a puff of smoke in the middle wafting from a flask. The name, the Infinity Dragon, was scrawled underneath. A light squeak of metal on metal sang out when it swung gently back and forth, as Anarin let it go. Stepping down from the stool, the young man focused on the front of his building. My building. His lips tugged to the side. Warmth settled into his chest as he looked briefly around, the waking morning street of the village of Nant. Then back at his corner store before going inside to begin setting up. Several boxes of supplies and product were stacked around the room. A few display shelves, all in black, sat here and there about the mahogany sales floor. Behind the cash counter, another counter had been built along the wall. Shadow box shelving, all in black, hung above it reaching to the ceiling. The ceiling was edged in mahogany-stained wood. Four rustic chandeliers of electric lights hung evenly spaced from the ceiling. Windows surrounded the wall open to the town road along the left side of his corner store. Anarin tied his long, dark hair back and out of his face before he picked up the first of the boxes. He reflected on how the best part of being in his own space was nobody would ever come in abruptly to ruin the unstable formulas he spent weeks and months mastering, as his family and friends had a tendency to do when he was first starting to learn alchemy. It was at that precise moment of thought, the sound of a motor car came to a halt outside the door. Anarin sighed. Only one person could have come by motor car, and the young man did not wish to see them. Hello! The bell jangled as Maxon swung the door open taking off his tweed flat cap as he looked about the store. The man was the same age as Anarin, a bit taller and broader in the shoulders, with a thick accent. Nice shop you got, mate. Good to see you open and settling in. How did you know I'd be here? Anarin spoke with mild annoyance through his broad smile, noting to lock the door when Maxon left. Maxon and Anarin had been friends for years, However, Maxon was the sort to ask too many questions and disrupt Anarin's concentration. Katrin said you'd be setting up, so I popped down to see how it was going. Maxon smiled with sincerity. Looks swell! 
Anarin put a box down on the counter next to the register. I hope to be open and running by the end of the week. What caused you to name it the Infinite Dragon? Maxon pointed to the plaque at the counter with the same logo as the sign outside. Nothing in all the realms is as powerful as a dragon, Maxon. Anarin replied. With a single tear, I can cure any ailment. With a single scale, I can use any spell. With just a breath of their fire, I can burn down the entire world. Well, you know these things better than I do, sure. Maxon rubbed his hands together, looking about. Is there anything I can help you with, Annie? Not at present, though I do appreciate the offer. Anarin smiled again, with more sincerity at the thought of Maxon leaving. Maxon did not make an immediate step toward the door, still twisting his hat in his hands. Is there something bothering you? Anarin tried to make himself look extra busy as he unpacked the box, pulling out metal tins and brown leather pouches, which he separated by ingredient. It's Adara. Maxon said with hesitation, likely knowing Anarin would roll his eyes. Adara was a carefree spirit in their group of friends. Her pixie-like features of short red hair, bright blue eyes, and her whimsical approach to life had a way of getting her into trouble. Usually in the way, she ran into impulsive ideas without fully planning them out. And what is Adara up to this time? Anarin's brown eyes flickered to Maxon briefly as he pulled a wooden rack from the box setting it next to the register, beginning to load the tins onto it. We both know how headstrong she could be, and this time she's going to get into trouble. Anarin paused with a knowing smile, turning a tin over in his hand. And what is it Adara wishes to do this time? She wants to find the sorceress who left a dragon child here. Maxon became very serious. You have to stop her, Anarin. You're the only one who can talk any sense into her head. I will do no such thing. Adara will do what Adara thinks best, whatever that might be. And you should stop her if you're so worried. Maxon shifted his weight to the other foot. I... A quest with a dragon child is not why you're here. If you won't talk Adara down, I suppose I have no option? That's the spirit. Anarin stated with faux enthusiasm. Now go, quickly before she convinces the magistrate to let her go on a reckless adventure. Maxon fumbled with his hat. Anarin wanted nothing more than to set up his space in peace. But with Maxon showing no signs of leaving, Anarin finally caved. All right, Maxon, I'll come with you. But I'm not going on any quest with dragon children. A week later, Anarin sat at a desk in a small stateroom, surrounded by business papers, catalogs, and orders for supplies listening to the sound of propellers on the dirigible as they smoothly glided through the air to drag Plass. The dirigible wasn't particularly large, with twelve staterooms and a decent-sized dining area that could also be used for a dance floor. It had been built for leisure excursions or modest dinner parties. A shop was supposed to open this week, he thought to himself, refocusing his view from the seemingly endless tips of mountains out the port window to the key he held up in front of his face. When he found Adara with the young, blue-skinned dragon child, Anarin knew he couldn't just abandon the boy. After a visit to the magistrate, it was concluded that Anarin was the only capable member of their town to speak with dragons. And since he knew one personally, Anarin reluctantly agreed to go. The magistrate supplied them with an airship and crew, and thus Anarin, Adara, and their friend Caterin were on board an airship to Drake Plass, where Baichin, the great golden eye of the mountain would be able to help them understand the dragon child. The poor thing was unable to speak common tongue, and Anarin unfortunately did not speak his. Like many dragons, Baichin had offspring born to humans. Anarin's old teacher would know best how to help a dragonborn. A gentle knock sounded at the door, and Katarin pushed it open. Can I come in? Of course. Anarin turned to look at her tucking his shopkeep back down under his shirt. You are always welcome. Katerin had been his friend and confidant since they were mere children. Her logical sense and easy-going nature made her easy to talk to and comfortable to be around. We're almost to the peak, she said. They asked me to come get you. Thank you, Katerin. Anarin hesitantly closed his catalog, 
before shuffling his papers into a neat stack. Do you want to talk about it? She asked. She brushed her long blonde hair back over her shoulder as she leaned against the door frame. I'm all right. Anarin pushed out the chair, planting his hands on the desk to stand. We all love Adara, and her terribly odd need to rescue forgotten creatures, so here we are. Katarin smirked. As long as you promise not to chastise her for it. Never. I might think scalding thoughts, but never would I speak them. Perhaps I should have been dragonborn. Anarin continued. I would be free to roam the world, and as I roamed the world, seek my fortune by burning pirate ships. Airships or water ships? The woman asked, looking at him with a playful smile. Any of them. Flying leaves endless possibilities. The great peak and the highest of mountains, dividing the world into three realms, stood even with the dirigible. The large mouth of a cave with a wide ledge in front of it sat in the mountain peak. Adara and the dragon child came onto deck as the airship lined up with the ledge below. A rope ladder dropped over the hull of the airship, and Anarin climbed down first to study it as the others disembarked. The dragon child was instructed to go next. Timidly, the little blue halfling took one rung at a time as a wind stirred around them. Come on, little one. Anarin held his hands out to coax the dragon child down. Adara followed next with Katarin close behind. When they stood at the large mouth of the cave, Anarin watched his friends take in the sight, Adara especially bright with wonder, causing him to pause and watch as she looked about the mountain peak with joy shining in her smile. When we go in, Anarin said, don't fear Brychen. You may hear her voice in your mind. She knows your thoughts as you think them. Adara's eyes couldn't get any wider. She can read our minds. Oh, Anaron, this is dreadfully exciting. Just remain calm, Adara. Anaron looked to Katarin. Katarin seemed excited, but her expression remained serene, causing him to wonder what she was thinking. Turning to the entrance, Anaron walked into the cave, thinking about the last time he'd left here. He spent time between semesters learning dragon magic from Bai Chin, and his goal had been to put what he learned into practice before returning again, which he'd promised wouldn't happen until after he'd successfully opened the infinite dragon. It's okay, little one, Anarin heard Adara speak. He turned to see her tucking the half-dragon, human-like child close to her side, his bright green cat-like eyes looking nervously about. The cavern led into a large room, and there in the middle of the room was Baichin. The golden eye of the mountain was a magnificent golden dragon, her body the size of a parlor room, and neck three times as tall as Anarin, who stood a head taller than Adara. As they walked up to her, Anarin heard Adara gasp with awe. Baichin laid on her belly, her gaze fixed to the outside world as though waiting for something to arrive. Her golden scales glistened in the light of the torches flickering around her, the cave walls surrounding her glimmering like diamonds in shades of silver and purple, the overall ambiance giving her the majestic appearance of a queen. "'Are you here for more spells to add to your books, little sorcerer?' Anarin heard in his mind. "'I am not,' he responded out loud. Her large golden eyes looked to each member of the party, settling on the dragon child. And who is this? Anarin was going to respond, but she shushed him as she bent her large golden head down to look eye to eye with the dragon child. The boy seemed to whimper, which led to crying. Bai Chin nuzzled the child gently. He put his arms around her large nose as best he could as they remained silent for a long moment. Anarin felt his heart break. He'd known the dragon child to be sad and wished to comfort him, but any way he tried to communicate had failed. You have much left to learn, little sorcerer. The dragon child needs your help. It seems the time has come to teach you how to speak to the halflings. Why did his mother leave him with us? Anarin asked. Bai Chen's eyes closed as she gave a heavy sigh. The warmth of her breath briefly washed over the friends before she spoke out loud. The woman who left him to your care was not his mother. Adara's mouth dropped open. She was his nursemaid, and she is not a sorceress. She is a healer. 
She is trying to protect the dragon child from his mother and father, who have pledged his life in sacrifice to the Dark One of Kier Kiven. Bai Chen brought her large head down to look directly in Anarin's eyes. You must do something to prevent this abominable sacrifice. This dragon child is marked by destiny. Anarin reached sullenly to the key hanging about his neck. There was no way he could abandon the dragon child now. What's his name, if you please? Adara asked. His name, little one, Bai Chin replied. Is not easy for you to pronounce in your own language, for he is a dragonborn, and dragonborn have mighty names given to them by destiny. The name his parents have given him was meant to seal his fate as a sacrifice. But I can't keep calling him Dragon Child, surely? Adara pressed. Indeed not. Bai Chin chuckled softly. Very well. The closest to your own tongue is Tegu. The dragon child smiled as though he understood, turning to Adara with shining eyes. It is good the child is still so young, Bai Chin continued, for he will learn your language with ease. Katarin looked between Anarin and Bai Chin. Anarin? She spoke softly. What are you going to do? Briefly giving thought, he looked at Tegu and Adara. Oh, bother all. I'm going to help the dragon child. He turned to Katarin. Because if I don't, I'll regret it for the rest of my life. Adara let out a squee of delight, giving Anarin a quick hug. I promise I won't let anything happen to him. Anarin, I give you the gift of dragon speak. You will be able to teach the dragon child how to speak in your own language. Bai Chin brought her large mouth to the young man's brow, as though kissing him. Anarin felt the heat of her breath consume his body. He did not feel different when she pulled her head away again. Tegu took Anarin's hand, looking him in the eye. Can you hear me? Anarin blinked several times before responding. Remarkable! Adara smiled brightly. Could you hear him? I can. I can hear him. Anarin looked at Bai Chin. Thank you. He dropped to one knee, bowing his head. May I be worthy of it. You'll prove your worth by keeping the dragon child safe. Destiny has set sights for his life, and he will fulfill them. Bai Chin became very serious. But you cannot let him fall to trouble, for the fate of the world will change. Things are not set in stone. The power to change the future is in your hands. Do not let it change. What must we do? Adara asked. Take the child back to your home for now. Bai Chin remained serious, though she did smile at Adara. Keep him safe from prying eyes until you receive word to flee your home. When you go, take little with you. There will be provisions along the way. Keep everything as you usually might, as if you expect to be home again shortly. No mold will grow in your food, no mildew in your waters, no dust or cobwebs to collect on your walls for as long as you are protecting the dragon child. Now go, quickly. His parents will be looking for him. Bai Chin concluded with urgency. Anarin bowed again, the others following his example. Thank you again, Great One. We will await your further instruction. They left the cave to the rope ladder, carefully climbing back up to the dirigible. Captain! Anarin called for the pilot as he stepped onto the deck, coming up last. Present! The pilot replied with a large smile under his comical white mustache, which jutted out from side to side. We're ready to head home. Is there any way we can move quickly? Anarin asked. It depends on the wind, but I'll do my best. The pilot smiled again, putting his leather helmet on, adjusting bulbous bronze goggles as he headed off. And that's it for today. If you want to hear more of this, check out the books on Amazon and follow Dana on her social medias. Thanks for joining me! Mm -hmm.